Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. As promised, we're taking a look at some Tyler Biotish replacements and a potentially, I will emphasize the potentially part, positive update on the Biotish ankle injury. The Cowboys fear, and at this point I think it's more of a confirmed reality, is that Biotis suffered a high ankle sprain in Week 17 against the Titans. That would put his playoff status roughly, you know, the extra half week, we call it two weeks, we'll be super generous there, in doubt as the Cowboys, well, we'll see who they play in the postseason, barring some freaky, you get the number one seed stuff, which we'll talk about actually on tomorrow's show. The MRI results are in per Stephen Jones, and they are saying that they think he has a chance to return. They're hopeful for the playoffs. Now, a high ankle sprain is typically about a four-week re recovery for a lineman. Four weeks would not put you back in time for week one. So, And we know the Cowboys are not always truthful uh, with their injury information as things come out. So... I would say murky at best in terms of him being available uh, to play in that opening playoff game, whoever that ends up being against the Dallas Cowboys. A bit unfortunate. Uh, there have been five penalties this year for Biotish, cut him down about, by about half, which is always good. Uh, no sacks allowed, not great run block. I thought he was actually playing kind of rough before the uh, um, injury against the Tennessee Titans. But I think he's been a good enough player at the center position and... You're already thin at that spot, as we'll get into here more in depth. So, what is your panic level right now over the Tyler Biotish injury? 1 to 10 is our scale. Let me know in the comment section. 1, low end, 10 on the high end. Now, as things sit currently, this was the offensive line depth chart for the Cowboys. Uh, as the injuries all went down and things were shuffled around after losing Biotish. So, at this moment, that is where things currently sit. Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. The obvious replacement option is Connor McGovern, who, yeah, I, I think has been your weak point on the offensive line this year. Uh, two sacks, six hits, 13 hurries. I know it's PFF. I, no one else does anything run blocking related, so I, I do what I can. Uh, two flags here, not that bad. He got pushed back pretty hard on an early rep when he took over at center. He hadn't played much center, so... There is, of course, that uncertainty. You've got the extra week and a half. I think McGovern's going to start for you against the Commanders. Um, but for playoffs or beyond, I think you are looking for options right now in the short term. So let's explore some more of those replacement options. The one that I'm curious about is Matt Farniak, who suffered a torn hamstring in Week 7. That was allegedly a six-week injury. I Again, we're way beyond six weeks. Um... We're at the 10-week mark, basically. So I have heard nothing on Matt Farniak. There's been no designated to return timeline there. Maybe you try to push him back to get back in time for Week 17 because the Cowboys like to have eight offensive linemen on their game day roster, healthy and active. They've been calling up a guy from the practice squad each week, but they're getting low on call-ups at this point. So I'd like to get Farniak back. I don't know if he's healthy yet. Brock Hoffman has been their call up the last few weeks. He's got one practice squad call up left. They can use that for week uh, 18. That would get you to seven if Biotish can't go, but then you still need somebody else on the active roster and for the playoff stuff if Biotish even does come back by then. Dakota Shepley uh, is the name I'm watching for here. He is out of practice squad call-ups. He was the one the Cowboys are going with early. He can play guard, can play center. You want that 7th slash 8th offensive lineman. You have nobody else who can play the interior O-line. If McGovern were to go down, knock on wood, God forbid, in week 18, you'd have to go with someone like Shepley. I'm sure many of you are going, Alec Lindstrom. Oh, he's hurt. He's been on the practice squad injured list with you know, it's the practice squad, so there's no information out there on it. Beyond that list for a while, I, at this point, I don't know if he's going to play. So your options kind of boil down to Connor McGovern or other. Uh, that's what we have right now for the Cowboys up front. Who should start at center then, at least for Week 18, possibly more if Biotish does miss more time? Who should it be? M for McGovern, O for, they're going to look at some other potential O-line moves to make here, practice squad promotions, etc. This is the pinned comment today. So if the ad break comes, take advantage. M for McGovern, O for other. 
Uh, this, again, is your current offensive line depth chart. We mentioned the lack of depth with Biotish being hurt, and now Josh Ball is your only healthy backup offensive lineman. I would be curious if, for Week 18, depending on how confident they feel about Biotish playing, do you try putting Peters at right tackle and Tyron back on the left side? I just think Tyron's with as much more comfortable on the right side, on the left side of the offensive line, and I think Tyler Smith will fit in good at left guard if that's the route you end up going and try to survive on the right side. Peters, I don't think they trust him playing an entire game. Again, we'll see what happens week 18. I'm curious. You had to shuffle three spots uh, when Biotis went down. If you think he's back early in the playoffs, maybe you just survive week 18 as best as possible. But I'm curious if they make some more move changes with McGovern also banged up. Now, I mentioned the practice squad call-ups, right? Your promotions. Guys you can sign from the practice squad. Lindstrom's hurt. I'm looking at Dakota Shepley. Avion Collins is more of a tackle. Alex Taylor is a tackle. Uh, those of you wondering about Isaac Alarcon, uh, international player pathway program. He's an exemption. Uh, if you call him up, you can't do it for game day only. The NFL has said no on that. You're not going to make him your active roster promotion because he's just not good enough, guys. I'm sorry. At least not yet. I'm keeping my eye on Shepley with Lindstrom banged up right now. Today's Cowboys report made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code COWBOYS125 for 125% deposit bonus when you put down at least 100 bucks. That's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code COWBOYS125. Minimum 100 bucks down for the deposit bonus. You can bet on the Super Bowl. I think, I think this feels right to me on the odds. Bills and Chiefs and Eagles and Niners are your top favorites. Then the Bengals, who are getting hot. Then the Cowboys. And th th doesn't that feel right to me or, or to you guys? I think, I think that's pretty spot on there. Now, hey, wouldn't it be nice if the Cowboys won a title? Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Maybe you just want to bet on them for Week 18 or bet on the Saints to beat Philadelphia this week. Whatever it is, betting on sports, do it with our sportsbook partner. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Cowboys125. Again, you have to put down at least 100 bucks to get that deposit bonus. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys125. So despite the Cowboys feeling good about where Biotish is at, some free agency options since I, I know how everyone thinks and are curious about J.C. Treader is a big name, right? He did retire in August amid rumors of injury fears that kind of, I think, driven down his market. I think being the NFL PA head was, for the players, was not a good thing for his job uh, employment. He was banged up a decent amount practice-wise last year, but he played well. One sack, one hit, eight hurries, 74.8 PFF run grade. Uh, again, we talked about J.C. Treader a lot in the offseason. It is now it's January, and we will round off a day here. I, I, I just, I don't think it's gonna happen uh, for Treader in the NFL. So, worthwhile name to mention, but I think right now the Cowboys are just be like, survive Week 18. Fingers crossed that Biotis comes back for the playoffs. And we will have you guys cover with more news and rumors all year long. Hit that sub button right here on the Cowboys Report, youtubecom TV. if you're watching somewhere else somehow. Make sure you're subbed for free Cowboys videos every single day. The intriguing name for me, if it ended up being more of a long-term thing for Biotis, which doesn't seem to be the case, Matt Paradis. Uh, now, there was a report uh, a couple weeks ago that, ah, he got clearance from his ACL surgery, teams have expressed interest. Of course, no one signed him because... Teams express interest is the phrase of agents saying, trying to get teams to express interest. Uh, nice run grade, uh, relatively speaking. Two sacks, two hits, 12 hurries. Uh, if he were fully healthy, I think this could have been an aim to explore more in the offseason. Again, for now, I'm not that interested because, ah, you know, he's, he's hurt, right? Trey Hopkins is the final name. Guys, it's January. There's nobody good at the offensive line because all the good linemen are signed. Hopkins is a former starter for the Cincinnati Bengals, was cut this offseason. Uh, understandably so. Four sacks, a lot for a center, by the way. Three hits, 13 hurries, and a really bad run grade. I know it's PFF, but I think you guys know the deal, the deal by now. Uh, Hopkins is 30. He's unsigned because he's just not good. Plain and simple. So in light of the update on Biotish and where things sit at center position, do you want to sign a free agent center? Why for yes and for no? I'll include practice squatters here as an option, 
But let me know in the comments, do you want to sign one? Y or N? Final notes here, uh, some practice squad poaching options. Now, remember, got to sign to the active roster. If that's, route, if that's the route you're going to end up going, you have to keep him there for a while, too. Uh, Austin Ryder has had starting experience before. He's a veteran. I think he likes being with the Chiefs there. James MP, BYU, your UDFA this past year, who you did not keep. You took Alec Lindstrom over him. He's on the Dolphins right now. Cameron Tom has bounced around the NFL for a while. He's on Philadelphia. Gator, great. Jonathan Harrison with the Falcons. Michael Benet, the former Penn State center. Uh, if, you've go, if you're going outside of maybe James Empey, who are those guys? Uh, you have a life. Congratulations. But you also made it to the end of today's video. So thank you. Yeah, I'll give you guys some love in the comments. If you did, just type in me if you watched all the way to the end of today's video.